Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is inrush current. Our objective is to learn to calculate inrush current using the data available on the motor nameplate, as well as discuss the electrical theory explaining inrush current. As you're no doubt aware, a motor at rest experiences a momentary surge of current known as inrush, starting current, or locked rotor current, when energized by full voltage. Inrush current may be about six times rated current, although in this lecture, we'll learn to calculate it more precisely. As the motor comes up to the rated speed, current will drop to the rated value. Full voltage, sometimes called direct online or across the line motor starters, must be designed to make inrush current. Inrush at times is an unwanted phenomenon that may affect the performance of other electrical devices in the same distribution system. If you've ever experienced the lights dim in an old kitchen upon starting up a blender or a vacuum cleaner, this is the result of inrush. For this reason, reduced voltage starting techniques like primary resistor reduced voltage starters, part winding reduced voltage starters, y start delta run reduced voltage starters, and soft starters, among other techniques, are employed to reduce inrush current and mitigate its negative effects. Lacking these techniques, a technician must at times calculate the anticipated inrush using the information available on the motor nameplate. This way, wire size and instantaneous demand in the electrical distribution system can be predicted in advance. Recall in the motor nameplates lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, we briefly examined some of the locked rotor code entries on the motor nameplate. Let's take a closer look at this entry and try some additional illustrated examples. The locked rotor code, sometimes they call the kilovolt ampere per horsepower constant, is a letter that represents a range of numerical values. These numerical values, along with power and voltage data, are then entered into a formula to calculate the anticipated inrush. The formula for a three-phase AC motor demonstrates that inrush is the code number times the power in units of horsepower divided by the rated voltage times 577. Note the placement of the parentheses for hard-headed individuals that wish to enter this formula into their calculator in one pass. As illustrated in the table, each letter has a lower and upper numerical bound. Depending upon the application, you may wish to perform the calculation twice, potentially three times, to determine the minimum anticipated inrush, the maximum anticipated rush, and the average anticipated inrush. You'll note the letters in the lock rotor code table go from A to V and do not include the letters I, O, and Q as these letters might be easily confused for other data and entry headings in the motor nameplate. Consider a quarter horsepower motor. Intended to operate using 208 volt three phase AC in the low voltage configuration with a locked rotor code of M, meaning it has a kilovolt ampere per horsepower constant with a low of 10 up to a high of 11.19. Center of mass would be the average of these two numbers at 10.6. You note the rated current of this motor operated at 208 volts is 1.3 amps. If we wanted a quick rough estimate of inrush, we could say we might expect a momentary surge of 6 times 1.3 amps, or roughly 7.8 amps, and call it good. However, as you'll soon learn, this rough estimate isn't exactly accurate. Let's calculate the lowest, average, and highest amount of inrush we might expect to observe. At the low end, M equals 10. Substituting this value, the power rating in horsepower, and the rate of voltage into the inrush equation results in a lower bound of roughly 6.9 amps. In the middle, M equals roughly 10.6. Substituting this value, the power rating in units of horsepower, and the rated voltage into the inrush equation results in a middle estimate of roughly 7.3 amps. Finally, at the upper end, M equals roughly 11.2. Substituting this value, the power rating in units of horsepower, and the rated voltage into the inrush equation results in an upper bound of roughly 7.8 amps. There you have it. We might therefore expect this motor to experience an inrush of roughly 6.9 amps to 7.8 amps. This is a far more precise estimate than the six times rated current shortcut, but illustrates the shortcut isn't that bad for this particular system. This isn't always the case for motors designed to drive high torque loads, like positive displacement pumps, or fully loaded or inclined conveyor belts. Consider a one horsepower motor intended to operate using 230 volt three phase AC in the low voltage configuration with a locked rotor code of P, meaning it has a kilovolt ampere per horsepower constant with a low of 12.5 up to a high of around 14. Center of mass would be the average of these two numbers at around 13.25. You note the rated current of this motor operated in the low voltage configuration at 330 volts is 3 amps. You'd think we'd be able to estimate inrush at roughly 6 times 3 amps, or 18 amps, and call it good. However, this is far from the truth. At the low end, P equals 12.5. Substituting this value, the power rating needs of horsepower, and the rated voltage into the inrush equation results in a lower bound of roughly 31.4 amps. In the middle, P equals approximately 13.25. Substituting this value, the power rating units of horsepower and the rate of voltage into the inrush equation 
results in middle estimate of roughly 33.2 amps. At the upper end, P equals around 14. Substituting this value, the power rating in units of horsepower and the rate of voltage into the inrush equation results in an upper bound of roughly 35.1 amps. We might therefore expect this motor to experience an inrush of roughly 31.4 amps to 35.1 amps. Way more than the six times rated current shortcut suggests, illustrating the shortcut is quick, but it isn't always accurate for all applications. All right, before we move on to the electrical theory describing inrush, let's put your knowledge of calculating inrush to the test with these two illustrated examples. Given the data in the motor nameplates and the kilovolt ampere per horsepower constant table, see if you can calculate the anticipated average inrush for these two motors when placed in the specific voltage configuration. For both scenarios, let's use the center of mass or average of the kilovolt ampere per horsepower constant. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The first example features a three horsepower motor intended to operate using 208 volt three phase AC in the low voltage configuration with a locked rotor code of K, meaning as a kilovolt ampere per horsepower constant with a low of eight up to a high of around nine. Center of mass would be the average of these two numbers at around 8.5. Substituting this value, the power rating in units of horsepower and the rated voltage into the inrush equation results in an estimate of roughly 70.7 .7 amps. You'll note this is roughly 8.1 times the rated current of 8.7 amps when in the low voltage configuration. The second example features a super beefy 15 horsepower motor intended to operate using 460 volt three phase AC in the high voltage configuration with a locked rotor code of G, meaning as a kilovolt ampere per horsepower constant with a low of 5.6 up to a high of around 6.3. Center of mass would be the average of these two numbers at around 5.95. Substituting this value, the power rating in units of horsepower and the rate of voltage into the equation results in an estimate of roughly 112 amps. As astronomically large as this value is, you note this is only roughly 5.7 times the rate of current of 19.5 amps when operated in the high voltage configuration. As these examples were intended to illustrate, the six times rated current shortcut is just a rough estimate and motors can and do exhibit wide ranges of inrush in relation to rated current, sometimes more than six times, sometimes less. Those motors with a kilovolt ampere per horsepower constant at the upper end of the alphabet, nearer to A, exhibit less inrush than would a similarly rated motor with a kilovolt ampere per horsepower constant in the lower depths of the alphabet, nearest to V. Additionally, these examples illustrated that inrush, although brief, can put a tremendous strain on the electrical distribution system that must be anticipated in advance. Oftentimes, generators or off-grid battery-based inverters specify two ratings. One, a rated current capable of being met on a nearly continuous basis, and two, a maximum surge current that the system is capable of temporarily meeting. Consider a motor anticipated draw two amps at the rated conditions. If we use the six times shortcut, we might expect this motor to briefly experience an inrush surge of 12 amps. If we used a generator with a rated current of three amps and a permitted maximum surge current of nine amps, it might run the motor, but it wouldn't start it without difficulty or without the use of a reduced voltage starter. Lastly, before we start discussing the theory behind inrush, it should be noted that some motor manufacturers take it upon themselves to perform inrush calculations in advance and explicitly state the expected inrush right on the motor nameplate. As you are no doubt aware, the entry FLA on a motor nameplate stands for full load amperes. That's another way of stating rated current, meaning it is the current drawn per phase when the motor is producing its rated mechanical power output. If you ever see the entry LRA, this is the inrush current where LRA stands for locked rotor amperes, meaning this is the magnitude of the momentary surge of current drawn per phase when the rotor is locked or in the at rest condition and the motor is suddenly energized by full voltage. The LRA entry in the motor nameplate saves you the trouble of performing inrush calculations yourself.